Again, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, and thank you for giving me the easier assignment in the debate here. <laughs> Although maybe it's a hostile room, we'll see. Okay, these are my disclosures. All right, a few disclosures. So uh, in addition to the other financial disclosures, um, I, I actually have these slides from years ago from talks that I've given, and I think that they're still very pertinent. I like doing endo, but I also like doing bypasses. And I've always believed that certain patients are clearly better served by a bypass first, not an endo first approach. Fortunately now, we're, we're accumulating more and more data and level one data for the treatment of CLTI, which I think is really exciting because we'd had a, a, an absence of level one data in the uh, peripheral space. And so we had uh, the original basal trial back in 2005, and now within the past year, we've got the results from two randomized prospective uh, multi-center studies, best CLI and basal two. So, Back in BASEL-1, uh, we were already told that patients with longevity are better served with a vein bypass than with balloon angioplasty. Um, now let's look into the more recent data from BEST CLI and the BASEL-2 trial that were both recently published in the New England Journal and in uh, Lancet. And I'll just summarize here the findings from BEST CLI. It showed that bypass was statistically superior to endovascular therapy in regards to uh, male and death, major adverse limb uh, events. The difference was driven by the impact of the need for reinterventions in the endovascular group. Based on this, an endovascular first approach is not supported by level one evidence, and bypass should be offered in suitable risk patients with an adequate saphenous vein. Bypass surgery bill is superior. Now, Bill's probably gonna point out, well, Basil II came up with the opposite conclusion here. They said that endovascular therapy is statistically superior to bypass in regards to amputation-free survival. The difference in this trial was actually driven by the impact of uh, survival rate, which was lower uh, in the surgical group. And so they concluded that best endovascular should be offered first. Is best endovascular superior to bypass? And does this really represent a conflict between uh, with the uh, uh, results of the best CLI treatment. Well, these are really two different trials, and I think it's gonna be very interesting going forward as we look into really the data and comparing the data that we get from these trials. But if you look at BASEL-2, the patients were older, they were more hom uh, homogenous uh, uh, cohort that was studied, and they were sicker. More prior MIs, PCI, cabbage, more prior limb interventions, more distal disease. It was a higher risk. It was a different population than that that was studied in best CLI. In best CLI, over 40% of the patients had femoral popliteal interventions, about 30% had uh, tibial uh, interventions, and that was very different than basal two, that was really a tibial study, 100% tibial bypasses, 100% tibial uh, uh, endovascular interventions. Um, there are some questions of differences in crossovers and initial success rates, but suffice it to say that however you analyze it, looking at intention to treat or um, as treated analyses, uh, uh, the conclusion is still the same in best CLI. And importantly, both of these studies had very different endpoints, major adverse limb events versus amputation-free survival, and of course we can debate also as to which is the better endpoint. Both these studies, however, revealed something fairly sobering, and that's that uh, we still have a major problem when we're treating patients with CLTI that the mortality is still way too high. Over a, a, a third, to up to 50% of patients uh, died uh, non-limb-related uh, events, mostly cardiovascular events in these studies. So it's not just about saving a leg, we have to save a life as well. We've got to do better also with medical management and risk factor modification across the board, and I think that's a shout out to all of us to do better. A little bit of a closer look at best CLI. There were two cohorts. The larger cohort with over 1,400 patients were patients who had adequate single segment great saphenous vein for bypass. The smaller cohort with about 400 patients was uh, looking at patients without single segment saphenous vein, comparing endo to alternative conduits like spliced arm vein or uh, uh, spliced vein from various sources. The results were a little bit different between the cohorts. Cohort one was the one that clearly showed that patients with saphenous vein bypass was superior to an endovascular first approach, however you looked at it. Major adverse limb events, all cause death, amputation, reinterventions, surgery superior to endovascular if you have a great saphenous vein. 
In cohort two, those patients that didn't have single segment saphenous vein who used endovascular conduit versus endovascular therapy, it was kind of a push. It was really, surgery was not inferior, endovascular was not superior. Uh, there was really no difference between surgery and endovascular treatment. And I think that that's actually pretty remarkable and important to look at too, that people always poo poo alternative conduits and say that they're not gonna work, that's why we're gonna do endo, but the reality is, and do it, you know, alternative conduits actually perform surprisingly well in best CLI and not worse than endovascular therapy. So why do we even need this trial? What's wrong with just doing endo first for everybody and then we'll sort out the people who don't, uh, don't do well and they can get bad at bypass afterwards? You know, a lot of people say we're not burning any bridges. You can always do a bypass. I think that's Bill there, you know. <laughs> in any event, that's not the case. We do burn bridges and outcomes are worse if you fail endo before you have to have a bypass. Even going back to basal one, if you looked at bypass after endovascular failure, it was highly significantly less successful than primary bypass, looking at amputation-free survival and overall survival. The curves are very different. Endovascular is not just a free shot. So you can't just do that and say, it'll be fine. If it doesn't work, we'll do a bypass. That's been borne out also in subsequent meta-analyses that have looked at this question, again showing when you look at primary patency, it favors primary bypass as opposed to redo bypass after failed endo. And the same goes for amputation-free uh, survival, also favors primary bypass. <coughs> Let's deal now with the elephant uh, in the room, or maybe a few elephants in, a, in the room. Because I think that Bill's probably gonna get up here and he's gonna say, well, you know, this trial mostly included vascular surgeons. I'm taking that a little personally, that I can't do endovascular well, that the endovascular procedures were performed by surgeons, 73% in cohort one, that interventionalists and best CLI were not that skilled. I, I hope he doesn't say that, that's a terrible thought. Uh, and that the endovascular technical failure rate was way too high and it doesn't really reflect uh, real world uh, practice. But that's not the case, okay? Vascular surgeons actually treat the majority of PAD patients in the United States. This is looking at Medicare uh, claims data in the United States, where you can see the bars on the left uh, representing vascular surgeons do the bulk of the procedures. So it actually fairly well reproduces a distribution that was in best CLI. If you look at basal two, most of the endo interventions were performed by radiologists, but their technical failure rate was identical to the technical failure rate in best CLI. So it's not that they're necessarily any better. I think they're different studies. Uh, a few more issues that Bill may remind us about. He's gonna say, well, the endo patients weren't treated well. Uh, maybe the vascular surgeons were okay, but they didn't do the right thing. Over half the patients, uh, people say, were treated with PTA alone, that drug elution uh, utilization was unacceptably low in this study, and that endovascular therapy just overall used in best CLI was subpar and doesn't represent the current uh, uh, state of the art. You know, and that's a common criticism of any prospective randomized trial by the time it comes out. You know, technology certainly uh, has evolved, but I don't think it's that bad. So even in light of the paclitaxel debacle that went on where drugs drug uh, eluding therapies were withheld from patients because of the Kitsano uh, meta-analysis and concern for uh, mortality hazard. Um, if you look at best CLI, PTA alone was less than 20%. So most of these patients did not get PTA alone. If you look uh, uh, per segment and per patient, over 50% were treated with drug eluding therapies uh, in the best CLI treatment. So even in the context of the Katsano meta-analysis when all this was going on, there was still a large amount of, uh, of uh, drug-eluting biological therapies that were offered to patients in this trial. I'm not gonna read everything on this slide, but suffice it to say that however you wanna slice it or dice it, in cohort one, if you have a good saphenous vein and best CLI showed that bypass was clearly significant in many, many, many ways compared to endovascular therapy. And there was no difference in, in perioperative or long-term mortality or major adverse coronary events, cardiac events. So in summary, best CLI provides level one evidence supporting a patient-first approach, not an endo-first approach. Both surgical and endovascular revascularization play key roles in the treatment of CTLI, but some patients are clearly better served with a bypass. Patients with a saphenous vein should have bypass considered as an initial strategy. 
There is a complementary role for these technologies, and certainly I do a lot of endo in my practice as well still. And I do think that we've got to improve the overall survival outcomes of these patients. And it's really key that we have multidisciplinary teams working together uh, to generate optimal outcomes. Thanks very much.